It by Stephen King. There were yellow eyes in there, the sort of eyes he had always imagined but never actually seen down in the basement. It's an animal, he thought incoherently. That's all it is, some animal. Maybe a house cat that got stuck down there. Still, he was ready to run, would run in a second or two, when his mental switchboard had dealt with the shock those two shiny yellow eyes had given him. He felt the rough surface of the macadam under his fingers and the thin sheet of cold water flowing around them. He saw himself getting up and backing away, and that was when a voice, a perfectly reasonable and rather pleasant voice, spoke to him from inside the storm drain. Hi, Georgie, it said. George blinked again. He could barely credit what he saw. It was like something from a made-up story or a movie where you know the animals will talk and dance. If he had been ten years older, he would not have believed what he was seeing, but he was not sixteen. He was six. There was a clown in the storm drain. The light in there was far from good, but it was good enough so that George Denbro was sure of what he was seeing. It was a clown. Like in the circus, or on TV. In fact, he looked like a cross between Bozo and Clarabelle, who talked by honking his, or was it her? George was never really sure of the gender. Horn on Howdy Doody, Saturday mornings. Buffalo Bob was just about the only one who could understand Clarabelle, and that always cracked George up. The face of the clown in the storm drain was white. There were funny tufts of red hair on either side of his bald head, and there was a big clown smile painted over his mouth. If George had been inhabiting a later year, he would have surely thought of Ronald McDonald before Bozo or Clarabelle. The clown held a bunch of balloons, all colors, like gorgeous ripe fruit in one hand. In the other, he held Georgie's newspaper boat. Want your boat, Georgie? The clown smiled. George smiled back. He couldn't help it. It was the kind of smile you just had to answer. I sure do, he said. The clown laughed. I sure do. That's good. That's very good. Now about a balloon. Well, sure. He reached forward and then drew his hand reluctantly back. I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. My dad said so. Very wise of your dad. The clown in the storm drain said, smiling. How, Georgie wondered, could I have thought his eyes were yellow? They were a bright dancing blue, the color of his mom's eyes and Bill's. Very wise indeed. Therefore, I will introduce myself. I, Georgie, am Mr. Bob Gray, also known as Pennywise, the dancing clown. Pennywise. Meet George Denbro. George, meet Pennywise. And now we know each other. I'm not a stranger to you. You're not a stranger to me. Correct? George giggled. I guess so. He reached forward again and drew his hand back again. How did you get down there? Storm just blew me away. Pennywise, the dancing clown, said. It blew the whole circus away. Can you smell the circus, Georgie? George leaned forward. Suddenly, he could smell peanuts. Hot roasted peanuts and vinegar. The white kind you put on your french fries through a hole in the cap. He could smell cotton candy and frying doughboys and the faint but thunderous odor of wild animal shit. He could smell the cheery aroma of midway sawdust. And yet, and yet under it all was the smell of flood and decomposing leaves and dark storm-drained shadows that smell was wet and rotten. The cellar smell. But the other smells were stronger. You bet I can smell it, he said. Won't your boat, Georgie? Pennywise asked. I only repeat myself because you really do not seem that eager. He held it up, smiling. He was wearing a baggy silk suit with a great big orange button. Bright tie, electric blue, flopped down his front. And on his hands were big white gloves like the kind Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck always wore. Yeah, sure, George said, looking into the storm drain. 
and a balloon. I've got red and green and yellow and blue. Do they float? Float. The clown's grin widened. Oh, yes. Indeed they do. They float. And there's cotton candy. George reached. The clown seized his arm, and George saw the clown's face change. When he saw then was terrible enough to make his worst imaginings of the thing in the cellar look like sweet dreams. What he saw destroyed his sanity in one clawing stroke. They float. The thing in the drain crooned in a clotted, chuckling voice. It held George's arm in its thick and wormy grip. It pulled George toward that terrible darkness, where the water rushed and roared and bellowed as it bore its cargo of storm debris toward the sea. George craned his neck away from that final blackness and began to scream into the rain, to scream mindlessly into the white autumn sky which curved above Derry on that day in the fall of 1957. His screams were shrill and piercing, and all up and down Witcham Street, people came to their windows or bolted onto their porches. They float, it growled. They float, Georgie, and when you're down here with me, you'll float too. George's shoulder socked against the cement of the curb, and Dave Gardner, who had stayed home from his job at the showboat that day because of the flood, saw only a small boy in a yellow rain slicker, a small boy who was screaming and writhing in the gutter, with muddy water surfing over his face and making his scream sound bubbly. Everything floats down here. That chuckling, rotten voice whispered, and suddenly there was a ripping noise and a flaring sheet of agony, and George Denbro knew no 